Ladies and gentlemen, two stories that nobody's really talking about, or I should say that a lot of people aren't talking about. John Durham issuing subpoenas and interviewing witnesses report. This is by Jerry Dunleavy. There's a grand jury out. He is aqua- he's obtaining testimony for the grand jury. John Durham's um, investigation into the origins and conduct of the Trump-Russia investigation is moving along during the Biden administration with a special counsel arranging witness interviews and issuing subpoenas in recent months. President Joe Biden asked, okay, so Durham's investigators are now arranging witness interviews and grand jury subpoenas are also being used to gather documents in recent months. Now, you need a Republican House. You need a Republican House of Representatives. I've stated this endlessly, okay? Hit subscribe to this channel. Share this segment everywhere. Let's get these. Let's get this story going in April, because it's really important. Um, for too long, people have this. People have had this viewpoint, like, oh, nothing's ever going to happen. Uh, Hillary Clinton and and you know Hunter and everybody, they get away with everything. Trump sneezes, and it's an investigation, and there's an impeachment. They find nothing, but, you know, it's a big obsession the Democrats have, and there's just a double standard. There is. There is. Almost all of media votes one way and pushes one narrative. It's true. Once 2022 comes along, you have a Republican House of Representatives. The Durham probe um, will have some political backing. John Durham, from from what we've from what we know of him, is a very honorable man. He's put government officials who, uh, bureau officials who really engaged in really despicable acts, he's put them behind bars. He does need, if not media, he needs political support. So that's that's number one. I mean, this is an article by Jerry Dunleavy, John Durham issuing uh, subpoenas and interviewing witnesses. There's a grand jury now. It's a special counsel. Read the article below. You cannot stop or, you know, terminate a special counsel. You you just, you can't do that unless John Durham does something, you know, you know, that, that isn't, that it's against the law. Another issue, another interesting, interesting topic that relates to this because he could fall into... Uh, he could fall into the scope because, you know, uh, Paul Manafort had nothing to do with Russia. But, oh my God, his ostrich skin suits led to him being uh, imprisoned. So, here's, here's an interesting New York Times Hunter Biden's memoirs. Seven takeaways from beautiful things. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is USA Today. And it's it's pretty interesting. USA Today, it's just it's just hilarious. I mean, it's hilarious and also um, kind of shows the duplicity of media and the Democratic Party. How do I explain this? So, USA Today, Hunter Biden says he was consuming. Okay, crack. Every 15 minutes. This is not like front page news. This is not. So I tried to be algorithmically friendly, but that's the title. Hunter Biden said he was smoking that narcotic every 15 minutes. More jaw dropping moments from memoir. Beautiful things. Jaw dropping. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if Donald Trump Jr.? was doing that every 15 minutes, or Eric Trump, or Ivanka Trump, they would have no mercy, zero mercy. Nothing would be like this romantic kind of, um, like, it it wouldn't be a story of triumph. So they're saying, oh my goodness, you see what... First of all, he shouldn't have been able to obtain a 38, which which his girlfriend threw in the dumpster. (laughs) 
<laughs> behind a convenience store right next to a high school. So that, and then he got, then he got the Secret Service to get involved and, and protect his behind. Then we have the issue of him leaving a laptop with incriminating data and emails that show pay-to-play schemes. So you have that. And now you have, it's just unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. It's unbelievable that there's, this, there's two different worlds. Democrats live in two different worlds. They look at, they look at or media, uh, and people who don't like Trump. And by the way, my vantage point is that I'm not enamored with the Republican Party. I've, I've been, I was a lifelong Democrat before I voted for President Trump. The both political parties, where you have Mitt Romney and, and Nancy Pelosi, are two sides of the same coin when it comes to uh, foreign policy, for example. President Trump, although many people think he's crude and rude and boorish, and there are things he shouldn't have stated, okay? Um, even if he tried to be this presidential type of, uh, you know, um, typical politician, the media wouldn't allow him to to, to, they wouldn't have given him a moment of rest. There are certain things, however, he shouldn't have said. That being said, um, how do I explain this? There's this duplicity, the disingenuous nature of people judging President Trump. It's, un, it's unbelievable. Could you imagine, could you imagine if a memoir was written, so, I mean, they're pretty much out in the open with this. Hunter Biden, son of President Joe Biden, has seen his fair share of ugly things. Okay, so, they're trying to make it. Biden wrote about all of it in his new memoir, Beautiful Things. You better believe that if you, this is the legal graft. If you're a Democrat and you smoked, you know what, every 15 minutes, it's all good. It's fine. You lost possession of, of a 38 your girlfriend throws it into a dumpster near a school, no problem. As long as uh, President Biden is trying to curtail the Second Amendment. I mean, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. Then you have, very likely, in a drunken stupor, because you have the, the, the photos and the videos, but very likely in a drunken stupor, you leave a laptop at a computer repair store with emails that say, oh yeah, I give 10% to the big man and um, emails from um, business, from wealthy individuals and business leaders and foreign governments or, you know, people that Biden said he never met with, which he did, or we, we know almost certainly from the emails that he did, because he lied through his teeth. And that's, by the way, what's going to impeach him. Once 2022 hits, you know what? It, oh, payback is a you know what. They're going to impeach Biden on um, Hunter's emails. And poten potentially more things that we find out from his son. But here, Biden wrote about all of it in his new memoir, uh, Beautiful Things. His candid, chronic his candid chronicle of his <laughs> drug and alcohol-fueled binges. <laughs> it's like... Okay, but did you did you survive or did you triumph? Are you he's still reportedly um suffering from these demons. So I mean, he's it's just unbelievable. Where's Hunter was a rallying cry from President uh, Donald Trump to try to smear Joe Biden. I'm not going anywhere, Biden writes. I'm not a, a sideshow of the moment in history, uh, as all the cartoonish attacks try to paint me. Um, he, look at how he's treated. And yes, it's a special counsel. This, the Durham probe could uh, lead to Biden's son. Okay, because anything, anything that has to do with the origins of Trump Russia, which was a complete fabricated hoax, you have to be a complete imbecile to believe that Trump uh, called up Putin to buy Facebook ads, or that Facebook ads even swung any vote. Now that we're, now that we're seeing that social media is 
one of the most horrible, terrible things that mankind has ever created. I'm sorry, people kind. But once we're once we once we're like Facebook, we realize Facebook, Twitter, Twitter is like an alternate reality of of contempt, disdain, angst. It is the worst impulses of humanity all into the some kind of tron, this like tron for apoplectic, seething, fuming individuals. It is a dystopian cyber reality that should never exist, really, should never have existed. Because it's now led to, I mean, there's like a Vogue editor that was forced out by one of the people who's now being forced out at Vogue. It's the, I mean, this is like the French Revolution of political correctness. If you look at what happened in the French Revolution, all the people that pushed for it got the guillotine. Got the guillotine. So that's what's taking place now. And anyway, we see right now that, that Facebook and Twitter are like, you know, scourges. But nobody switched from Clinton to Trump because of Facebook. That is a tinfoil hat fantasy with zero evidence. And they say, well, the intelligence community says so. It's like, what? Yeah, the intelligence community also said the Gulf of Tonkin and WMD happened. So, but anyway, I mean, you can read, it's a USA Today article, and <laughs> it's, it's pretty, I'm about, say, smoking, you know what, every 15 minutes, more drop, drop, jaw-dropping moments from memoir. So what they do, and what they do is they try to humanize the indiscretions of Trump's of Biden's son when they would pontificate and judge and condemn the same indiscretions if it was Donald Trump Jr. or Eric Trump. I'm not really like I don't condemn or judge Hunter Biden. That's I don't even condemn or I've never condemned or judged from a moral perspective Hillary Clinton. Or any any Democrat really, or even Joe Biden. What I what I look at is the duplicity. The same people who would get their st- their soapbox out and start, you know, pontificating and judging and condemning and 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 talking about how oh my God, you know, hey look at the president. So they they have two ways of looking at the world. If you if you if you Dislike Trump, if you have like an extreme dislike for Trump, you have two ways of looking at the world, almost certainly. You allow a Democrat to get away with a lot more than you would a Trump (laughs) or a Republican. But again, like my whole thing is, if when Trump Republicans take over the House, because you had Republicans that went after Trump with a dossier uh, purchased by Clinton, that did that when Republicans lost, it wasn't Trump's fault, although Trump didn't have to utilize Twitter in the manner that he did. That was that was wrong. Twitter was a trap for Trump. When Republicans lost because they investigated a Republican president based on nonsense that Democrats purchased or gossip from an, uh, from uh, from a a diplomat. So that's why Republicans lost. They never stood by like when like CNN like laments and and oh you know oh harkens back to a time when we had George W. Bush. He was the worst president of all time. He was the absolute worst president of all time. Got us into never ending, never ending military conflict without any definition of victory. The most immoral, by the way thing that the country can do for its own for for the men and women who who have to implement the foreign policy of imbeciles like George W. Bush and Cheney and Rumsfeld who are I mean how they get positive feedback from the press and Trump who who wants to who wanted to remove Americans so um May 1st 2020 May 1st 
of this year, 2021. We're supposed to leave a region of the world that Biden wants to keep us in indefinitely. And that's because of Trump. Trump negotiated a withdrawal. That's why I voted for President Trump. I got something from President Trump, numerous things. He was a great president in terms of accomplishments. He got caught up in media. The media set numerous traps for him, and he fell for them towards the end of his presidency. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. The Trump can make a, he's making a comeback already. We see what's taking place. I mean, Biden's presidency has been a catastrophe. It's been, if you judge Biden's presidency in the same manner you judge President Trump, Biden's infinitely worse and already a catastrophe. We had record low unemployment. We had Trump had record low unemployment, and he received more disdain and contempt than Biden's getting for an absolute unmitigated disaster on numerous fronts. Give me your, especially what's happening to to human beings in the southern geographic region of our country. God bless those people. God bless them. If Biden is not helping the situation. Neither are Democrats. Give me your thoughts below. And AOC is like, where, where is the moral indignation? It's always one world for Trump and, and a different narrative and a different world for Democrats. Give me your thoughts. Thank you.